So welcome back. Let us uh, start with uh, exercise. Okay, the lab. I'll just share my screen. Uh, in this first half, we have gone through the VPC and also the terminology, especially the CADR and all those things we have learned. And also diagrammatically, I have shown you all the things. Let us go through the lab. So this is, uh, we also did the KC. Uh, that is on Amazon VPC, that is 257. So let us uh, learn about 263. Very simple for all of you. Uh, 263, create a subnet. So just open that. <clears throat> so if anything is not understood or not clear, please ask me. Just start the lab and I'll explain about the objectives. So this is lab number 263. 263. So 263, 264 is very, very important lab. I mentioned here. 264. Okay. 263 will be the foundation for your 264. Okay, the lab is ready. In a minute's time, the lab is ready. So, yes, in this lab, you will learn about the customer scenario and create a VPC. First, we will learn about how to create a VPC. Familiarize yourself with AWS Services Console. Develop a solution to the customer. Summarize. I think it will not take more than five minutes for all of you. For all of you. Okay. So just to go through, there is a ticket which has come, means requirement. Can you please help me through the setup process? Would you like to build a VPC? So that is what is the requirement. Can you help me that I have around 15,000 private IPs? 15,000 private IPs. What is the CADR you need to choose? Yeah, if I, my requirement is 15,000 private IPs, what is the CADR with which I need to choose? 16. Slash 16. Slash 16. That will give you? That will give you? No. 15,000. Uh, okay. 15,000 means slash 16, right? No, not slash 16. Slash 16. Slash 17. 64K. Sorry? 17, sir. Slash 17. 18. Or 18. 18. 18. 18 will be the right one. So you can say 18 means you have 14. I mean 2 power 14. 2 power 14 is 16,000. Yeah. I, I Somewhere I wrote, right? Where is that? The power of two, I mean to say. Yeah, like this. So 16,000, this is the one which we really require. This is uh, 2 power 14. 2 power 14. <clears throat> 2 power 14 means it is slash 20, is not slash 18. Eh? Slash 18. So like that, you need to calculate. And uh, sometimes it requires at least 50 IPs. So that comes to, uh, yeah, you need to calculate, investigate the customer needs. Okay. You can also use subnet calculator also as needed, as needed. So if you don't know about two power values, you can make use. So just click this VPC, no, sorry, click this, the point number uh, AWS. It will open a new window and launch your VPC. This is the dashboard. We already knew about this AWS dashboard. <clears throat> so what you need is that you can either click the VPC on recently visited. Otherwise, services, you can go recently visited. Otherwise, in networking. In networking, where is that? Networking, you will see the VPC part also. Otherwise, if you are not, then put the VPC in the search box. So just explore first. What is there? So I am in the VPC dashboard. Before you start, go over the VPC. So this is the VPC. So you have lot of the lot of elements in your navigation pane. You see here, this is called as the navigation pane. There is one VPC which is already there. One VPC. 
you can see this one one vpc this is subnets route table internet gateway all these are important for us egress carrier gateway dhcp elastic ip managed prefix endpoints nat gateway and your acl security groups some of the elements we know some of the elements we don't know we ignore all those rule groups firewall firewall policies all this is vpn and of course there are number of things transit gateways traffic mirroring vpc lattice etc etc okay fine so just click this vpcs first one or you can click here or the, here anything just click this vpc you will be in the vpc dashboard there is one vpc already and this vpc is called as the default vpc you see this one this is called as tennessee default vpc default means for your infrastructure you have a region right you are in a region called as oregon you are in a region called as oregon you can see various other regions which are there oregon north virginia ohio north california these are all various regions every region has a default vpc a default vpc where you are hosting the all the important things i mean your infrastructure yeah and if you see the subnets click the subnets in this oregon region there are four subnets these are all four default subnets and the subnet names are 2a 2b 2c 2d <coughs> all these four subnets you see here 2a 2b 2c and this is called as this is called as availability zones i tell you the subnets in this vpc are called as availability zones you can have i think slash 20 slash 20 that is 4091 4096 minus of 5 that is 4091 ips in every subnet that much he has given default that much number of ips are available in every subnet fine the next one you can choose is uh, the route table route table even though there is a default route table but nothing will be there there is this is the default route table nothing will be there okay nothing no definitions nothing will be there no routes nothing will be there you see these routes nothing there is one route which is connected to the internet gateway that's all so this is internet gateway default internet gateway this is the default internet gateway which is attached to the vpc which is always attached to your vpc your vpc is nothing but default vpc this you see this vpc id 2874 ending this is your vpc 2874 ending vpc clear everything just still learning just still learning yeah understood then one of you respond yes sir, yes, sir. we didn't do nothing yes, we didn't do anything we just explored and we understood about the default vpc value right so now he asked you to launch the VPC wizard. He asked you to launch the VPC wizard. You can create your own VPCs. So here, what we are doing, we are going to create the VPC and we are going to define the first VPC. The name of the VPC will be first VPC. So, and also we are going to define the subnets. We are going to create the subnets. That's all in this lab, nothing much. That's all in this lab, okay? So what we are going to do is that launch VPC wizard. So, yeah, you go to VPC dashboard, go back to VPC dashboard. Yeah. See, I think there is a small deviation. You don't see this particular one, which is called as uh, launch wizard, which is mentioned here here use the launch vpc wizard button to launch your vpc you don't see that button instead of that what you can do is that you can create you can create your uh this thing you don't see here anywhere is there anywhere for, for anyone you can uh, visualize in the vpc dashboard no sir no it's not no, sir. that is i think the old screen which he has mentioned so what you can just say that follow my instructions Create a VPC. The first thing is that you need to create a VPC. So you want to create VPC or VPC or more. So let us see. So here, configure the following. So let us go through this particular one. 
select a VPC configuration and the following. Which VPC do you think you can uh, so and so uh, using the previous labs? Okay, the VPC name, you just give this name, first VPC. The name of the VPC, you just give the first VPC, right? Ah, take this option, VPC only as of now. Let us learn this particular one. So the name tag you can give as my first VPC. I hope all of you are following. To create VPC, there is a mismatch of your lab and this particular one. So IPv4, manual input, yes, absolutely. This is the first VPC, the CADR. Let us go through what is the CADR he has been into. So just to go through the VPC configuration. Yeah, the VPC CADR, which we require is for 15,000 is 192.168.00 slash 18. Slash 18, please remember, whatever is IP, forget it, whether it is 10.000 or 192.168.00 slash 18 is the thing which you need to define. You need to define. So just to give this value, 192.168.0.0 slash 18. And no IPv6. We are not using no IPv6. No IPv6. Okay. This is the name is first VPC. And you can see the public subnet. He wants to give slash 26, the subnet. So you can either create a subnet or if you want subnets now, you have to choose this option as VPC and more. So we have, since we have chosen only VPC, you will get only VPC options. So I'll take this as VPC and more. And more means you can also create subnets. Select that. If you want, yes. Now don't choose this. Uh, let us go through subnets. This is a tedious one. Uh, this is not matching. The first VPC, go back. Okay, all done. Sir, wait a second. Yeah, select only VPC. The first VPC, 192.168.0.0 slash 18. And no IPv6 CADR. Tennessee is default. Default. Don't change anything. And key value. Please understand the key value. It will appear automatically the first VPC name. And if all done, just say create VPC. Create VPC. So you should see a successful message which has come at the top. Okay. If you click your VPCs, this is the first VPC. You should see your first VPC has been created. Your first VPC has been created with the following parameters. This is the VPC ID, CEA6 available, and the CADR is 192.168 slash 18. Right? All of you did this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What effectively we have done is we have created the black part, the lab, big one, the black part we have created. So uh, that is 192.168.00 slash 16, no slash 18, slash 18 has been created. You can see that. Now next, next is to create the subnets. I think that's all in this lab, nothing more, nothing more. Okay, there is one subnet here. So VPC with single public subnet. Let us learn about how to create a subnet. So click this subnet, click this subnet. So there are four default subnets, leave it. We don't want to use any of the default subnets. Just say create subnets, create subnet. All right, select the VPC, your first VPC which you have created. You have to select that. You have to select that first. The subnet one, so first subnet. 
just see this particular one, the name of the subnet. The name of the subnet is public subnet. You see this one, public subnet, the name you give. Public subnet. Yeah, availability zone. I think you need not prefer anything. No preference. And yeah, this one. This is slash 26. How many IPs you will get slash 26? In slash 26, CADR, how many IPs? 64, you get? sir. 64 minus 64. 59. Okay, fine. So we have created a subnet with slash 18, a large one, out of which first public subnet we are going to create. 192.168.1.0 slash 26. So don't use this. The subnet IP, I mean, VPC is okay. 192, 168, 1.0, 1.0, slash 26, slash 26. You have to give exactly like as it is. That is 64 IPs minus of 5 you will get. And say create subnet. It's creating the subnet. So you should see public subnet like this. All of you got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there anyone? So first we learned about understanding the default values of the VPC. We have learned about there are default in this Oregon region. Yes, there is a VPC. There are also four subnets also default. There is one route table. There is one internet gateway, etc., etc. We learned about how to create VPC. We learned with the CADR, with the subnet value and the CADR. We also learned about how to create subnet, subnet in this one subnet, which is called as public subnet. And you have 59 IPs available in this subnet. I think that's all is there in this lab and send this response to the customer. That's all you have created a, you have created a VPC. You see this diagram, one VPC has been created and the black one subnet, public subnet also has been created. That's all, nothing else. So we will continue with this lab. You say end lab, this lab is over. Let us open the next lab.